All right, well, welcome back to When Animals Attack, y'all. It's been a long time since I've done one of these. So typically when I do, you know, videos like this, it's usually a, a unique story, you know what I mean? Like something that I haven't covered before, an animal that I haven't covered before, such as like the murder by snake story, the mole the chimpanzee story as well. So that's, uh, in case you haven't checked those out, then you can check those out as well. I'm gonna remaster those, by the way. Uh, but before I ramble off or anything, today we're gonna be talking about cassowaries. And to be honest with you, until about two years ago, I never really knew what cassowaries even were. I thought it was like some kind of dish, <laughs> to be honest with you. Now, in terms of cassowary attacks, there have been two of them that have been fatal, okay? One of them, which actually happened in the wild. Th that was the only fatal one that ever happened in the wild. And the other one occurred with someone that had the cassowary in captivity, unfortunately, while they were feeding it. Now, before we get into these attacks, like I said, these birds are very unique and, and they're very special. They're not your typical chickens or seagulls or whatever common bird that you'll find out there. These birds are commonly regarded as murder birds or danger birds, which is uh, like, you know, it's quite intimidating, but it's not for no reason, okay? Um, they are quite a formidable force. Uh, they, they have weapons. Uh, these birds are known as the closest living relative to dinosaurs. I also think it's important that, you know, people know just how much damage these birds can actually cause. Now, before getting into these weapons, I will tell you that the people of Papua New Guinea uh, the indigenous people there, they actually believed cassowaries to be reincarnations of their female ancestors, which I found to be, you know, pretty trippy. Like just, you know, viewing an animal as a spirit. That it's, it's, it's common in indigenous cultures, many indigenous cultures throughout the world. But, um, uh, you know, just looking at the cassowary and like, look at this picture, you know what I mean? Like just uh, imagining a spirit of your female ancestor in there, you know, just coming up to you like... So in terms of their physical characteristics, uh, like I was saying, those weapons, they have three-toed feet, each of which sport a claw that can reach up to five inches in length. And coupled with these extremely powerful kicks that they can launch, they use these claws to disembowel uh, potential predators. And although they might be flightless birds, like I was saying, they're still excellent swimmers. They can run up to 31 miles per hour, so no humans outrunning that. And not to mention, these guys can jump seven feet in the air. Like, that's... You're clearing shack. You know what I mean? You're basically clearing shack. That's that's insane. If birds could play ball, I'd have a cassowary with my number one pick in the NBA. I'll tell you that, man. You could probably goat that bird. Certified, stamped. Not to mention, they probably have to raise the rims from like 10 to 20 feet. You know, if you're jumping seven feet in the air. You know what I mean? Jokes aside. I was listening to Tooth and Claw podcast, by the way, which inspired me to talk about the cassowary attack, uh, as well as a bunch of other ones. I don't know if you've heard it before, but it's one of my favorite podcasts i listen to it religiously wes uh, my buddy he is a bear biologist uh, but he talks about an area of different animals as well so uh, they played a cassowary growl or a cassowary call rather and i swear to god it sounded like a like a cougar growl you know what i mean or like a mountain lion or something or like a jaguar and uh, like you know just low frequency growl because they have the lowest frequency growl this is another cool fact out of all birds so let me just play this cassowary call for you because it's it's very unique. Just take a listen. So tell me that's not a trip. You know what I mean? Like I, when I heard that, I was just like, God, like I, I would think it's a big cat, you know, or like a small big cat. <laughs> if that makes sense, but like one of the smaller big cats, that's what I mean. Um, anyways, let's get into these attacks now, shall we? Okay, so the first attack happened in 1926, and it happened to a couple brothers. Uh, their, their names were Philip and Granville. Uh, quite a name, eh? Granville McLean. And they lived out uh, in northeastern Australia uh, in a very tropical, beautiful region uh, with their family at a ranch. They would help their parents with their ranching activities, you know, chores, help with the cattle, and just they would do basic ranch life duties. And like most Australians, they also knew that they're living in a land or they're sharing a land rather with some of the most dangerous predators and creatures in the world. You know, you're talking about saltwater crocodiles, you're talking about venomous snakes and spiders, just to name a few. But on April 6th of 1926, probably the most unexpected of all these creatures happened to show up in the forest as the boys were playing outside. So 16-year-old Philip McLean and his uh, little brother, 13-year-old Granville. 
Uh, they were playing outside at the ranch. I, I assume they were playing. They were probably doing chores or playing, whatever it was. But they notice a little far into the forest, they can see a cassowary. Very unexpected guest. And being little kids, you know, even though like they're teens, you know, one is in their early teens and, his, and one is in his early teens. And it's still really silly what they did. They decide that they're going to grab some sticks. They call for their dogs and they charge towards this cassowary with intentions of beating it to death. And they start chasing this thing into the forest. You know, um, we've covered many different kinds of animal attacks on the channel. And most of them have happened, you know, due to unfortunate circumstances or so someone's misfortune. You know, animals don't go out looking for people, you know what I mean, to eat, okay, in most cases, okay? They're, they're not man-eaters like that. It's just unfortunate circumstances. But when you provoke an animal, especially one that you don't know much about even science and modern science they don't know much about my modern biologists don't know much about cassowaries they're just learning more about them now and you know their their behavioral tendencies especially when it comes to attacks you don't go provoking that animal these things can grow up to six feet tall the females can you know that's like that's like an nba point guard some of them that's what these guys decide to do they grab their dogs two of them two dogs and the two brothers they go chasing after this cassowary into the woods so as they approach the cassowary, they get a little close. Granville approaches it with a stick and he's about to hit it. And the cassowary just jumps up in the air and kind of just kung fu's him. Like, uh, and he gets startled and he just runs off a little bit. So instead of seeing this as a sign that maybe we shouldn't mess with this bird, you know, maybe we should just leave it alone. It's giving us a warning that don't mess with me, man. I know kung fu, you know, but jokes aside, on the reels, you don't want to mess with a bird like this. Come on, please. Like... Imagine messing with an ostrich, you know, this is a smaller ostrich, you know what I mean? I wouldn't mess with an ostrich, have you seen their face? Just their faces creep me out, you know what I mean? I'm not saying it in a bad way, they're not ugly or anything, but... Jeez, man, like, look at this thing. Like, I would not want to get that thing angry or provoke it, you know what I mean? And then look at this thing. That's what we're dealing with here, you want to get this angry? With those talons? Nah, man. Nah, not me, I'm good. I'm good for that. Anyways. So like I was saying, instead of heeding these warning signs, clear warning signs, Philip progresses and presses on with this attack. He goes on with his dog. And just as he gets close, and I guess at this point, this castaway probably just had enough. And it just felt like its life was threatened, which, which it was. And so it just launches into the air and unleashes this powerful kick in straight into Philip's throat, slits his throat. And then Philip just falls to the ground. He gets back up and he walks a few steps. And then he falls back down and he bleeds out and dies right on the spot in front of his brother and the dogs. So this one was, it was a tough read, man. You know, it was a tough listen. Uh, I heard it on the podcast, Tooth and Claw podcast first, and it was a very tough read because seriously, man, why provoke the situation? It was doing its own thing. This is just a big lesson not to provoke dangerous animals or animals you don't know much about. This was back in 1926, granted, they probably didn't know much about cassowaries, but regardless, you don't go messing with them. And that's what these kids did. And now a brother lost his life and a family lost their son. You know, and that was just really tragic to read. So now let's talk about that second fatal cassowary attack. The second one happened in Florida, actually, just in 2019. It was about April of 2019 or so. Uh, when a Florida man uh, who had been feeding his pet cassowary somehow fell over in the enclosure and the cassowary just attacked him, just like started ripping him to shreds. Uh, he had multiple, uh, he had like 12 lacerations, the sharp talons, uh, they basically gave him uh, slashing cuts and wounds, uh, really deep uh, puncture wounds throughout his body. Uh, but the main decisive blow was the major artery in his arm that was severed, unfortunately, the brachial artery. And uh, that caused him to bleed to death. And uh, Marvin Hayos was his name, I, or Hajos. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, please correct me in the comments if I'm not. Uh, he was 75 years old. His face was also severed. His neck, his back, his abdomen, thighs, legs, his right arm, uh, the whole enchilada. Um, investigators, they couldn't really piece together what happened because he was alone. But it seemed like he just fell over somehow. And the cassowary just attacked him. And uh, it was very unfortunate and tragic, but that's pretty much all the information we have on that one. But thanks again for watching and have yourself a wonderful day. Peace. If this episode piqued your interest, 
than our previous episode about a gruesome great white shark attack that was captured on film during a documentary shoot is likely to do the same. You can find it on the end screen of this video.